All right, we're on to example one with time zones, and I really can't fit the map and the question on the same page, so we're going to have to go back and forth a little bit. Uh, it says in example one, uh, coordinated universal time is represented by the letter Z and the longitudinal coordinate zero degrees. So if we look at our map, um, as we mentioned earlier, the Z column represents coordinated universal time, or UTC for short. And you'll notice that it passes through where zero degrees is. So they've matched up the reference point for time with the reference point for when you're calculating longitude. All right, next it says it passes through Greenwich, England. So um, this is England here, and Greenwich is where the zero degrees passes through, and it's also where coordinated universal time uh, passes it through, through it as well. All right, and then it says, hence why it is called Greenwich Mean Time G and T. So sometimes it'll say UTC and sometimes it'll say GMT for Greenwich Mean Time. Sydney, Australia is located at UTC plus 10. Okay, so Sydney, Australia is, I don't know, somewhere around here. And you'll notice it's under the K, which is plus 10. And quite often, rather than just saying plus 10, they'll say UTC plus 10, meaning it's 10 hours ahead of UTC. All right, now, since Sydney is on the east coast of Australia, its time zone can also be referred to as EST plus 10, which stands for Eastern Standard Time. So quite often, countries... Um, rather than going UTC plus 10, they might come up with their own acronym. And Sydney, the, the city, Sydney, um, sorry, the East Coast of Australia, came up with EST plus 10. They wanted to say um, Eastern Standard Time plus 10. They didn't want to put the UTC at the beginning. And, and there's lots of countries that have done this. So quite often when you get questions, you'll see... Uh, some acronym at the start which you might not understand. It's really just the number that you are looking at. Anyway, all of this information, most of this information, we don't really need to solve the questions. So looking at question A, what time is it in Sydney when it is 1 p.m. in Greenwich? Now, Greenwich, well, we know that Sydney is 10 hours ahead of Greenwich because Sydney is plus 10 and Greenwich is just where the zero is. So all we need to do is just add 10 hours. So 1 p.m. plus 10 hours gives us 11 p.m. or 11 o'clock p.m. That's question A done. All right, question B. If it is 2.30 p.m. in Sydney, what is the time in Greenwich? Now, Sydney is 10 hours ahead of Greenwich, which means that Greenwich is 10 hours behind Sydney. Alright, so what we need here is, um, as we mentioned earlier, we need some sort of a number timeline and Sydney is 2.30 p.m. and we need to go 10 hours backwards so that we can figure out what the time is in, in Greenwich. So um, to do that it is quite important to figure out where 12 o'clock is. And this is 12 noon. All right. So um, we know that if we go um, two and a half hours back this way, it's going to take us to 12 noon. And we've got to figure out how many more hours are needed so that we've gone 10 hours in total back in time. And this will be 7.5 hours, because together that makes 10 hours. And to be more specific, it's 7 hours and 30 minutes. So what is 7 hours and 30 minutes behind uh, 12 noon? Uh, well, what we might do is break it into two chunks. Let's go 7 hours first, and then let's go 30 minutes last. All right, so 7 hours behind 12 uh, midday would be 5 a.m., 
12 minus 7 is 5. And if I go another half an hour beyond that, it's 4.30 a.m. All right. So if it's 2.30 p.m. in Sydney, it's going to be 4.30 a.m. in Greenwich. So you would look at that and go, all right, it's not really a good time to, to call someone.